just maybe. Like, when you, when you have me running from home, home, maybe it's gone way too far. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about super diverse Jillian Michaels, who is Jewish, LGBT, and a bunch of other stuff leaving California for very specific reasons. Now, this is no surprise to me. People are leaving California left and right. They've had enough. I don't see how anybody lives out there, to be totally honest, unless you live way out in Podupville, middle of nowhere, way off the grid, basically, in the farm, picking almonds and, and, and cabbages and carrots, wherever y'all pick out there. Unless you out there doing that, I don't know what you're doing. Okay, maybe you got to uh, sell weapons to Central America. I don't know what you're doing, but the cost of living is crazy. I saw a video of someone at a gas station. People were putting 37 cents, 36 cents, $10. But the gallon of gas out there is costing beyond $5. For 87 regulars. So where are you even going? But sitting in traffic for five minutes and then having your car cut off? Like, what's really going on out there in left coast California? The politics are crazy. The prices are crazy. The crime is crazy. People are leaving. Even a lot of your stone cold stomp down leftists, even a lot of the people who would be championed by the left because of their diversity quotas, your LGBT you're this race, you're that religion. All those things don't matter when just living a regular life becomes impossible. Now, before I go any further, let's get into the actual clip here. This appears to be on a podcast with Sage Steele. And of course, I will link to this in the box. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. I grew up here. I'm a woman. I'm a gay woman. My mom's a Jew. My dad's an Arab. I have a black kid. And believe it or not, my son is half Latin, even though he doesn't look like it. I'm not sure what half Latin means, but it's, it's fine. So you got, you got a black kid, you're LGBT, you're Jewish, you're half Arab racially. You got a lot of stuff going on, right? And if I didn't say it, this is Jillian Michaels. She is, from my point of view, most known for her fitness opinion and being a popular person in that field. And she came under fire recently because she's talking about fat people and how we need to stop trying to promote obesity as some kind of thing that should be championed when it should not be. It should be seen as a health issue and treated seriously as such. But I digress. I hold a million cards in your game of woke victimology poker. And when I leave California, maybe you've lost your mind just maybe like when you <laughs> when you have me running from home um, maybe it's gone way too far what was the line like like what was it oh God, I guess, girl there's unfair. not enough time <laughs> now i want to hear what the line was and I, i'm sure there's been so much she's experienced just being out there in california being part of the hollywood scene just, just living and experiencing stuff, I'm sure that she's seen quite a bit. And I know the whole thing with the obesity situation. Like, she was, she's a fitness person. That's been her whole thing as long as I've ever seen her on television, on the internet, anywhere. It's been fitness. For her to be criticized, maybe even canceled for promoting fitness as a fitness expert is out of this world. And, you know, I, I actually take this, this line from Bill and um, Elon Musk, and they're like, I actually haven't changed. Yes. The world around me is shifting, and I haven't moved. So you're talking about Bill Maher, of course. And I think Bill Maher definitely fits into that category. Bill Maher has not moved. Bill Maher has been the same forever. But the left has gotten so crazy, so out of control, so ridiculous that they've kind of left him on an island by himself. And by default, he is considered to be on the right. But is he really? 
I don't know about that. So some of these laws that are passing here are absolutely mind boggling mm-hmm. in relation to crime, protecting our kids. Like we're decriminalizing everything, which arguably I would probably be okay with, but we're not regulating any of it. Right. So it's like, okay, you're going to decriminalize sex work, but only so women can legally loiter on the streets, like mm-hmm. not to keep them safe, not to have them pay taxes, mm-hmm. not to make them, you know, regularly check for STDs, not to take away the pimps out of the equation. It's the, cr- like, if you made that argument to me, I'd be like, well, yes, we want, of course. I- but see, let me just pause you right there. And I'm sorry for the, the freeze frame, uh, Jillian Michaels. But see, this is the mentality that a lot of liberals have. They agree with things in theory, but they don't think about how things are going to actually play out in reality. It's like the whole thing with the $1,000 um, lack of prosecution for retail theft. Some would say, well, you know, that's okay. People are just feeling to, you know, it's hard times out here and they shouldn't be saddled with this. See, you, you, you see the empathetic side of it, but you don't see the real side of it, which means you don't understand how this thing is going to actually play out when you set it in motion. Okay. You decriminalize this sex work. Are you going to have this an explosion of it? Because there's people that really want to get involved with it. Same thing with the retail theft. If you decriminalize of it, are you going to have is an explosion of it? Because there's organized crime. There's random petty criminals by themselves who want to steal, not just a quote unquote, get bread to feed their family as an AOC would say, but they want to steal to make a lot of money. This is very simple, but people who don't think too far beyond their feelings right here in their heart, they don't think too far beyond that. So of course, when it goes into practice, this is the face that they make because it didn't anticipate what we as thinking people saw from the very beginning. But I digress. I, I mean, I could be liberal. I could go there with you, but it, yeah, I, I grew up this way. But when it's like, oh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pass a law for LGBTQ rights so that 24-year-old men can sleep with 14-year-old boys and not have to register as a sex offender because it's just not fair to the gays. I'm like, I'm... What? Now, someone may think, hey, ABL, that's a sexist remark or homophobic remark. It didn't really happen. That's that. That's that did. You could look it up. Scott Weiner. He was a guy behind it. You could look it up. Look it up right now and tell me if she's lying or if I'm lying. It's what? Like, I don't know if you saw that one. That was like, I think, early 2020 when they passed yeah. that law. Mm-hmm. And it's, so I was like, if a 24 year old man touches my 14 year old son, oh, I, I will get a gun and yes. take matters into my own hands. Yes. Like, are you f- kidding? Or the fact that a 12 year old child can be put on off label cancer drugs mm. to irreparably change their body. Again, if my son came to me and said, mom, my daughter i think i'm trans i'd say okay you know like you want to dress this way you want me to call you see see this 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 is the fault of liberals because you guys don't understand where to draw lines see this is partially your fault you see what happens with this whole thing of puberty blockers hormone blockers it's just it's the next step in indoctrination that starts at home your daughter comes up to you or your son comes up to you and says, Hey, I think I'm trans. And your son or daughter is 12 years old. You say, all right, cool. No problem. See, you're not setting any rules in your house. And it's not the same thing as being gay. If somebody thinks, if somebody thinks they're transgender at that age, I would just say the person is confused and is going through a phase. I would not encourage it. I'll be like, Hey, you know, just work through it. Maybe you're going through some things. I'm going to try to figure out what's happening to make them feel that way. Because obviously this is not a normal thing for a young person to have feelings about. So I'm going to try to figure it out that way. When you enable it, what happens is they get indoctrinated at school the same way, on television, on their phone, through social media the same way. And then they get to the stage of trying to go to a hospital. And now let's make it official. And then you have some, you have courts sometimes that want to reinforce it and say this is what is best for the child because the teachers say it, the 
doctors say it and you say it as a parent. So now, boom, here go the drugs. That's how that works. You see, again, you think about just the emotional part of it rather than the logical part of it, rather than the logical conclusion. Whatever the heck you want me to drop, fine. Explore it. I love you. I'm cool. Like, do you as long as we're safe. But we're not changing your body until it's fully developed. I'm sorry. Conversation's over. Can you get a tattoo? Exactly. I said the same thing about, about the tattoos. I, I said that back in 2020. You can't even get a tattoo under the age of 18. Can't smoke cigarettes. Can't drink beer. I said that four years ago on Jubilee. And in, in California, I said that right when the scandemic started. March 2020. This is basic common sense. But again, it's got to start from the home. Crazy. It's insane. Like, I, I, I'm, I, I just can't. It's, it's madness. It's madness to me. I could go on and on and on, and it's madness. Right on. I'm with you right on that. So shout out to Jillian Michael. Shout out to Sage Steele for providing the platform. Um, she, what she said was right on point, but again, she's missing some things. And this, this is, this is the plight of the liberal. As I close, I want to say this, a lot of these liberals don't like the outcome of the things that they support. This is why they leave and go to Austin, Texas and vote the exact same way they did in California. And then they're wondering why the same problems chased them, followed them from California to Texas is because wherever you go, there you are. You just don't like the outcome of the things that you wanted. That's all. You got to change what you want. You got to change yourself. And then, and only then, will you see a change in your surroundings. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on what Jillian Michael said? You think she's on point, off point, missing a few things? Uh, has there anything together? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. This is what liberals do. A lot of your, your, uh, your Bill Maher, Jillian Michaels, all the rest of them, they vote one way, behave one way. They are one way in California, which creates the negative environment around them. When they see how negative it's gotten, when they see how crazy it's gotten, then they want to leave, go somewhere else, and start it all over again. When the very same things begin to happen, they got to just think at a certain point, wow, I left California, now I'm over here in Idaho, and the same thing is happening. Why am I seeing the puberty blocker clinic in Boise, Idaho? How did that really happen? Let's just put two and two together to get four, shall we? But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.